Okay, so today we are going to talk about birth control. And birth control is basically any method that prevents a pregnancy. In some cases, birth control can reduce the risk of spreading a sexually transmitted disease, um, but depending on what kind it is, uh, it may not. So we're going to go through that and talk about which ones do and which ones don't. Um, and really, the only birth control that is 100% is abstinence, which basically means not having sex. Because if you don't have sex, you can't get pregnant. And you probably aren't going to contract an STD. Okay? So, although some of these are highly effective, um, you know, something can always go wrong, let's say if you are using a certain type of birth control, but if you are truly sustaining, um, sustaining from, from any type of sexual activity through abstinence, that's 100%. You are not going to get pregnant. Okay, so one form of birth control is sterilization, which basically means cutting and sealing the gamete transport tubes to permanently prevent fertilization. Now this has nothing to do with STDs and therefore does not protect against it because you could still be having sex with someone who has an STD and contract that STD. But in a male, it would be what we call a vasectomy. And here the vas deferens is cut to prevent sperm from leaving the body. And usually they are reversible. There is also what is called tubal ligation. And this we do to a female. And this is where the oviduct is cut to prevent the egg and sperm from meeting. And typically this is not reversible. Okay, so sterilization is the actual surgery that would be involved to basically stop the transport of the sperm slash egg and from those two things meeting. And then we have hormonal contraception. And this is only currently available to females. It does not protect against STDs and it could even increase the risk of transmission depending on the type you're using. And there are two basic approaches. There is either um, a pill that you could take that is a combination of estrogen and progesterone, or there are some that are only progesterone. Okay, and these are basically um, pills, right? You, you've probably heard of these. They could be the pill, uh, it could be a skin patch, or it could be what we call a vaginal ring. And here what we see happening is we see um, these contraceptions that basically use synthetic forms of es estrogen and progesterone to suppress the release of SF, FSH and LH. That is the follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone. So it basically prevents the maturation of the egg and its release from the ovary. So it is preventing ovulation. Without ovulation, there is no chance that the sperm could get to the egg and fertilize it. So therefore, this would prevent pregnancy. And then we have progesterone only contraception. And this basically uses a synthetic progesterone. And this could prevent ovulation. It could cause a thickening of the cervical mucus, which would then make it difficult for the sperm to reach the egg. And it can keep the endometrium unprepared for implantation so that the egg could never implant in the uterus and start to form um, a fetus. And these, there's a couple different examples of these. These could be injections that you take maybe once every three months. There's something called a mini pill. And you can actually have some implants that are rod shaped implanted in, in your upper arm usually, right under your shoulder. And these all have different names according to their makers, but they're all basically 
doing the same thing. And that is, as I mentioned, the prevention of the ovulation, thickening of the cervical mucus, or basically keeping the endometrium not, um, not healthy enough, if you want to say, to, to allow for implantation. Then there are what we call um, uterine, intrauterine devices, meaning inside the uterus. And these are small devices that would have to be inserted by a physician. And this would actually stop the union of the sperm and the egg and or implantation into the uterus. Now, this again does not protect, protect against STDs. This has nothing to do with that. An example of this would be an IUD that actually prevents the union of the sperm and the egg and the implantation of the egg if it does happen. So an IUD is an intrauterine device, hence the name I, U, and D. Then there are some barrier methods and these would prevent fertilization and uh, examples are the diaphragm, a cervical cap, the contraceptive sponge, or a male or female condom. So these are gonna have a varying degree of protection against STDs, um, depending on exactly which they are. But um, for instance, the cervical cap is not really going to protect against an STD, whereas a condom, a latex condom, is actually quite good um, for protection against STDs. There are also some spermicidal preparations that could be taken, and this is basically um, something that will kill the sperm and therefore prevent fertilization. If the sperm are not alive, they are not going to fertilize the egg. Now, these are only effective for about an hour once they are activated. Okay, and these are usually things like foams or jellies or tablets that basically could be inserted into the vagina to basically kill any sperm. They also kill organisms that can be responsible for STDs, but they may also damage the cells of the vagina and then ultimately increase susceptibility. So it's kind of um, a tricky situation there. Fertility awareness. This means um, the avoidance of any kind of intercourse when fertilization is likely to occur. And this sometimes is, is coined the rhythm method, meaning there is a certain time of the month when the woman is more fertile. So if you think it's that time of the month for you, you basically don't have sex during that time, therefore reducing the chance of fertilization. Now, this is not 100%, and um, you know this is sometimes where accidents might occur because you might think it is a safe time to be having sex, and it may not be. So as this says, it can be challenging to determine the four days in each cycle when fertilization might occur. So, you know, some people track it on their calendar or by their, their body temperature or cervical mucus. But again, if this is the only form you're using, uh, it is susceptible to accidents because even if you're just off a little bit, uh, it could cause for fertilization to happen. And obviously this has nothing again to do with STDs because you are still um, you're having unprotected sex, you're just hoping that it's not during the time that you are fertile or the female is fertile. Okay, and then there are what we call emergency contraceptions. And this is something that has been coined the morning after pills. And this is basically where you take a pill right after having unprotected intercourse in hopes to stop or prevent any fertilization slash implantation from taking place and therefore causing a pregnancy. So um, there are you know, some different types of these on the market, but it basically you would take, the female would take a pill and this contains 
a certain hormone that would then prevent ovulation or it would block fertilization or keep the fertilized egg from implanting in the uterus, uh, depending on the exact situation. And this needs to be taken about 72 hours or less after having the unprotected intercourse. Again, this has nothing to do with STDs. Okay, so there you have it. Um, birth control in a nutshell. Um, some new terms there maybe, some different ideas about you know what what is effective and what is not and the role each type of birth control may play not only in preventing pregnancy but in um, sexually transmitted diseases. Please let me know if you have any questions or concerns and have a lovely day.